So I thought I'd make a video on how to fly from Coronet Peak to Wanaka. So I'll just quickly show you what I'll take uh, for that flight. Normal flying stuff, so the wing and the harness. I use the XC Tracer and I have a stylus so I can operate my phone and I sit my phone on the flight deck just there. A big puffy jacket, that's for flying in to keep me warm. I'll take at least two liters of water. There are rivers and stuff that you can get water from, but I always start with two liters. I take an inReach. Um, you could take a Spot or an EPIRB. There's no phone signal at the back of Coronet Peak, so you really do need something like this uh, radio so I can chat to my mates whilst I'm flying. Bring a power bank and cables, um, and I keep all the electronics inside of a small dry bag. Also take sun cream, some painkillers, all good bomb out food, just some gnats, some trail mix. Take a dry t-shirt for flying in. Uh, hiking poles, that's a preference. I just like hiking with them. A poncho if I think it's gonna rain. Sometimes I'll take a inflatable sleeping mat. So that's what I would take. So let's have a quick look at the route. This is what I'd describe as the classic route to Wanaka. Brow, Soho, over to Knuckle Peak, and then it's ridge hopping down over Middle Peak, Mount Alpha and then final glide into Wanaka. So the most common takeoff is Rocky Gully but I would say that it's not the easiest as it often comes on later as it's a south facing slope. It can be easier to take off from the summit as it's a north face. Also the airspace restriction is five and a half thousand feet on the south face and nine and a half on the north. And I'm going to try and take the climb here it says usually one at the top of Rocky Ridge. This one will get me as high as I can before gliding down the ridge in that direction to Brow. So the ceiling of the airspace is five and a half thousand feet. So I want to get as close as I can to the ceiling of the airspace before going on glide. Now I, I want to make sure I don't break the airspace. So I'll give myself a bit of leeway. I'm at 5,000 feet now, so I'll go a little bit more and then I'm going to push down the ridge in the direction of Brow. I've left uh, the top of Rocky Ridge and I'm gliding down the ridge towards Brow. Um, the uh, best way to go is just stay above the ridge line. Um, often there's a little climb here just above this peak, but never really a cracker. Um, what I'm really aiming for is the spur on the southern side of Brow is uh, the windward side and uh, usually there's something going off there. Just arriving on the summit of Brow Peak, um, kind of been ridge soaring a little bit there trying to see if I can get the climb. So if I don't get anything on the summit here, I'll likely push down this spur and try and get something. There's a cliff face on that side that's sitting in the lee of the southwesterly and it's usually a pretty good uh, trigger. Connecting from Brow to Soho, I would say is the crux of the flight. I've lost count of the amount of times I've landed in Maystown. It starts with getting as high as possible on Brow, which can be tricky at times, but the ceiling of the airspace is 7,500 feet over the summit, so get as high as you can, or until you get bored, then give it a nudge. If it doesn't work, the walkout isn't too bad and usually takes 3 to 4 hours. This is a track from an easier day when we had stronger southwesterly winds and it was far more on. This is a photo of the south face of Soho in the springtime. You have a choice here between a couple of spurs. I like to take this larger one in the centre as it's the most direct and leads to the summit. But I have also had success off this one on the right and is a more direct route if you're trying to fly to Cadrona. On a normal day, I'd expect the valley wind to be flowing up the Arrow River from Arrowtown in this direction. Just before you reach the spur, you start to feel bubbles. See, I'm starting to get bubbles now, but I'm not going to turn yet. I'm going to wait until I'm a bit closer and the lift's a bit, a bit stronger. And then the thermal should be running up the ridge line and then probably popping off the, the top there. Hopefully this is working. I can see a hawk thermaling just ahead of me there, that's a good sign. So in a southwesterly, generally, the wind will flow up the Arrow River from Arrowtown. That's why I've got the windward side here, it's facing more towards Crown Peak. Um, generally that's what uh, you find here from my experience. Um, even though the direction is southwesterly, which is this direction, um, the way it sort of flows up here just comes up this gully 
just taking it all the way up to this spine. And I'll turn there and go back over that peak and then maybe time for some 360s. So here I'm just taking the climb up above the summit of Soho and then following the ridge line along to the northern end. So I'm going to just surf underneath these clouds here, tag the northern end of Soho and then head for Knuckle Peak. Usually it's fairly rough up here, some kind of convergence going on on the northern end of Soho um, and I'm going to aim for the middle spur on Knuckle Peak um, and I'll try and top up on that cloud just on the end before I go. So this is a closer look at the northern end of Soho. The wind generally on a good day will flow up the Motatapu from Glendu Bay and up onto the sunny northern faces of Soho and pop off on the ridge lines here and here. This is the deepest part of the route if you were to land just north of Rose's Saddle, but I have found that it is the most reliable part of the route. Looking back at northern Soho, you can really see why it works so well here. You've got sunny northern faces that draws up all of the valley wind and it really kicks off on the top there and often is quite turbulent. But as I said, it is very reliable. Now looking at the connection from Soho to Knuckle Peak, you've got a couple of options here. There's a spur on the right that works and then the spur on the left, which is the most direct line and the line that I normally take. I'm climbing up on Knuckle Peak, I'm at 6,100 feet. It's working quite well. So I'll take this climb as close as I can to the cloud. Um, eventually I'll be over the summit here and it should get a bit stronger. In fact, I'll push a little bit this way. The summit, there we go. So you're closer to the summit and the climb strengthens. There we go. That's five, five meters per second that spiked at. Five meters, consistent, that's good. So uh, yeah, just basically it's about following the ridge line now and uh, under the clouds. There are landings down there, but I would say that if you are planning on flying this line over these ridges, in the middle here, which is the best route to go, it works the best. Um, you just have to be, be sure you're pretty confident on your slope landings and just in case you do have to go down there, but yeah, you, 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 you shouldn't be. On the, right, on the day like today, you just follow the ridge and... Uh, yeah, you, you're, you, you should be sweet. Sweet, so I'm just gliding from Middle Peak to Mount Alpha now, following the ridge line. Nice clouds ahead. 7,000 feet and uh, yeah, I just got to get to Alpha and then that's it. So yeah, now it's just about enjoying it. Follow the ridge line, braking the lift, accelerating the sink. Keep the glider open. Now to have a look at the option of taking off from the summit. This is better because you can go up to nine and a half thousand feet on the north side of Coronet Peak. Um, I usually take off and then take a line up the ridge line and to this knob on the end. And there's usually a pretty reliable climb on the northeastern spur of Coronet Peak and get as high as you can before crossing over towards Vanguard. The other option is taking off from Green Gates if you've got a westerly or southwesterly wind. Both of these takeoffs, you kind of have to just commit to landing out the back. I'm leaving over 8,000 feet. This is looking at the southern face of Vanguard. There are a couple of options here. You can either go for the southwestern ridge, that's closer to the road and better in a westerly or southwesterlies, or you can go for the eastern side, which is Mailings Peak. This is better in southeasterlies or light winds as it's closer to the northeastern spur of Coronet Peak. So I got as high as I could, which was 6,700 feet on the summit, and I'm going to take um, a line to the more western spur. You can go uh, to this middle one here, but um, yeah, I, I haven't had great success there, but I have seen track logs with people getting climbs. So yeah, I'm going to go to this one over here because I've been there before and I, I know that it works. What's good about this route is that uh, the, you've got the Skipper's Canyon Road, um, 
that, that runs along this valley down there. And it doesn't look like there's many landings, but there is um, paddocks down there that you can land in. And it's pretty reliable hitchhiking out of there. Also, there's a new uh, track that's been built that runs along Deep Creek down there. So here I'm just arriving on the southwestern ridge of Vanguard. The thermals tend to run up this gully and there's several different trigger points along this ridge. So I'll get over one of the triggers, take the climb and push up the ridge and keep repeating that process until I get to the summit. So here I'm just working up the ridge getting closer to the summit. You can see there's nice clouds that are starting from the summit and working their way north along the Harris. And this is looking at coming at the southeastern side of Vanguard on Mailings Peak. Uh, if the wind's a bit more easterly or straight southerly, this can be a better option and works quite well. I'm heading for Mailings Peak, which is this one just here. Um, I don't think I'm going to arrive above it, but hopefully I get something on the southeastern side of it. Bit of an easterly wind today, that's why I've chosen to go this side. If it was southwesterly, I'd be on the other side of Vanguard. That also works quite well. Um, it's a more commonly flown route there and it's closer to the road. This is a bit deeper, but it does work. This is a look at the northern side of Mailings Peak and you can see why it works. North facing and nice and steep. You can see Wanaka from here. I'm at 7,800 feet above Vanguard. So another benefit to going this way, you can go about higher. The airspace goes up to nine and a half here. So yeah. You just keep gliding up this ridge. Well, I'm leaving the climb because I just got an alert on my phone that I'm approaching the nine and a half thousand foot airspace. Woo! So you've got a couple of options here. You can either cross here towards Knuckle Peak and just north of Rose's Saddle, or you can keep going up towards Mount Hyde and cross over towards Roy's a bit further north. Or if it's a cracking day, just keep going up the Harris. Might want to bring a couple of muesli bars in a tent. Backside of TC, not aspiring. Ernstall's that way. I'm going to keep going this way, I think. Six meters a second. Woo! Seven and a half. What a climb. And there you have it. Queenstown's a Wanaka flight.